Rope bowls are so versatile that I could even say it's the only kind of bowl you would need unless you want to eat soup. What materials do you need for a rope bowl? Of course a rope. Who would have thought of that? So I tried different brands out and I will link you the products below. So the first one was Bobini, which comes in different colors and I like that option. So it is weak, it's five millimeters thin and it's stretchable. And this gave me the result of a thin little basket, looks a little bit like porcelain and you still can manipulate the shape a little bit so you can fold the edge over. I like that. And if you want to go for something more sturdy like this basket over here, you would go for a thicker rope like that one. I don't know the brand exactly, I ordered it through Amazon. It's six millimeter or you would say a quarter of an inch and it's not stretchable at all. You could also go with macrame yarns, this is six millimeters, this is five millimeters and those come also in different colors. So you have a lot of options to choose from. So what kind of notions would you need? I would recommend in each case a thicker machine needle, so maybe a jeans needle or this one is a hundred in size. Then for the beginning of the project we need larger pins and if you want to embellish your rope bowl later with fabric scraps this is a good option. Then you can also embellish the bowl with a thread color. Um, even a variegated thread would be nice so I tried it here with my stitches. They are not really perfect. It was a try. And for the ending I used this leather label over here which you can find for example in an Etsy shop. Before I start I have to set up my machine accordingly. So I inserted the thicker needle and then I installed my zigzag stitch and I also lowered my upper thread tension and I prepared already two spools in advance so because I know I will need a lot of this uh, thread underneath. How do you start your project? This fraying edge I trim that off with a 45 degree angle and then I form a little snake. I curl that in and I can just do that with my fingers like that. I go round and round until I have about let's say two inch in diameter something like that. Okay this looks good so far and to secure it I now go with my long pins pin them in like that and here and over here so crosswise you would say last one Looks good and see it's really stable and I'm pretty safe now to go under my sewing machine. I now saw with my zigzag stitch crosswise over this midpoint to make everything stable and stiff. So let's trim off those thread ends. Now I have a really sturdy and stiff beginning point 
and from here I can now sew along in a spiral. So that's the next step now. So the procedure here is pretty easy. You hold the rope stiff and feed it through your machine while you turn that part which is already curled. Now I want to embellish my fabric basket a little bit with little black accents and I have already this fabric strip here. I personally find that those strips have the tendency to fray a lot. So what I did is I used fusible web for this part so the fraying is minimized. I cut about that size of a piece and I bring it around my rope like that. So my stiletto is comes in handy here when I fold it over a bit, hold it in place. At this point my diameter is large enough to start with forming my basket and therefore I will now keep on hold my kind of plate against the machine so that it has a certain angle and then saw with this angle. Looking good so far, now I want to deliberately determine where I want to place the next black accent and I want to have it about here. So I pin a needle in place so I know where to bring in my next accent. At this point I want to come to the end of my row bowl. I have different options here. One would be just to trim off my rope and then later cover the fraying edge with a leather label. I like that version but for this rope I go with something different. I want to have kind of a sleeve like that. Trim my end in a 45 degree angle. I bring this tip in here and I hold it in place with my stiletto. There are some fraying edges, but we don't care. We go over this point with the zigzag stitch a couple of times back and forth, back and forth to secure it. Once 
once you gave your first project a try, you will figure that this kind of sewing can make you addictive. And if you want to go forward with more ideas, for example, something for your breakfast baguette, and you want to have an oval starting point, you start with a kind of warm, and then you bring your rope in spirals around. Also, you could do something for your flower pot or something you hang as a flower pot. How is it called in English? Flower ample or what do you say? Or you could do something like a bag or you could something do with a lid on top. You will figure it out. Also, you can embellish your robots in different ways. So um, imagine you use different thread colors. You can do something like a gradient or you use more scraps than I use for mine or colorful scraps and you can even paint outside onto your bowl this color. There are so many ideas on Instagram. You type in hashtag rope bowl and you are inspired. If you liked that video, then give me a thumbs up, subscribe and hit that notification bell. I hope you had so much fun like I had because I'm now addicted and have to go to my sewing machine to make another one. Bye.